Hey guys, this is Brian over at Obedia, and I've got some cool, exciting news. Uh, I am going to begin doing music making tutorials for the iPad. Um, the iPad is quickly becoming one of the uh, premier ways to make and produce music, and um, I think that this is something that will really help out you guys uh, out there in music making land to hopefully be able to streamline your workflow and get some questions answered and things like that. So, uh, I picked up an iPad 2 recently, and I'm going to start off by talking a little bit about the premier music making app uh, for the iPad, and that's GarageBand. Uh, so GarageBand is $4.99 from the Apple App Store, which is a great deal considering everything that it's uh, capable of. It comes with a lot of Apple loops uh, that you can incorporate into your projects and uh, a ton of uh, software synthesizers and various other things. So when I first open up GarageBand, uh, we're going to see, of course, that it's going to uh, introduce me to the songs that I have recorded. If I haven't recorded any songs, I can just create a new one. I'm going to create a new song, so I'll just click on the new song icon and hit new song here. So then immediately, uh, GarageBand's going to open up to the instruments. And this is cool because there's a focus on just getting started really quickly and making music. So from now, from here, I can scroll through all of the instruments that are available to me in GarageBand. There's uh, guitar amps, sims, and audio recorders and things like that. And so I can just scroll through each of these, uh, of course, just using my finger. And I'm going to go ahead and select drums. And so the drum kit will immediately open up and now I can change the drum kits that I am working with by just simply clicking on the name of the kit that's right here in the top and I'll get a list of available kits and uh, the cool thing is that there are some kits that again obviously look like regular drum kits and I can also select drum machines that are pad based and so this is cool if you're used to pad based drum machine work this is gonna uh, be very familiar to you so the other great thing here is that it gives me a visual uh, overlay of what each of these pads has assigned to it. So there's kicks and snares and claps and things like that. And, and so this is, again, a great way to just get started really quickly. Now, of course, the next thing that you want to do is be able to just start recording. So that's really easy to do. Um, all I need to do initially, if I just want to start recording, is hit the record button. And if I've enabled it, uh, GarageBand will begin a count-in and then it will begin recording. Now I can set up count-in recording from the song settings by clicking on the wrench here on the top right hand corner and then I can enable things like my metronome, my count-in, and what sound I would like to use for the metronome. I can also set my song tempo and things like that right here. So when I made those settings I can just leave that set up and now I can start recording. So I'll hit record and GarageBand's gonna start recording and I can just start playing back a drum loop. So that's, uh, you know, that's just a quick little drum loop right there, nothing very special. But now that I've done this, I can go into the arrangement section of GarageBand. And to do that, I just need to click on the arrange button right up here. And that's right next to the instrument button. And now I'm in arrange view. So now in arrange view, I have the ability to edit the uh, MIDI notes that I've just recorded. If I click on a clip, uh, with my finger, I, it'll select it. And now I can adjust its length um, by using the sliders that are on either end of the MIDI clip here. Now I can also make changes to this by double clicking on it with my finger and I'll have the option to cut, copy, delete, uh, loop or split this clip. If I click loop, I can loop this clip uh, down towards the end of my project right here. I can also change that loop just by clicking with my finger and dragging. So this makes it really easy for me to make changes uh, to this little uh, MIDI clip that I have just recorded. And so once I've done that, I can just play it back, of course. And now if I want to add another instrument to my arrangement here, that's easy to do. All I gotta do is click on the plus sign down here. This will take me back to the instrument selection. So now I can go ahead and I can select, let's say a keyboard. 
And now the keyboard, uh, again, there's a lot more options for keyboards. And to select a different keyboard, I just click on the name of the keyboards right here. And I'm going to get a list right here of the different keyboards that are available to me. And I can scroll through and I can choose different ones. I've got classic synths, I've got bass, I've got leads and things like that. And I can scroll through what's available to me just by using my finger. I can choose one of these and then it's gonna load up and it's gonna show me the controls on the right hand side. Uh, I'll have pitch and mod, and then I've got other various controls here that I can make use of. Here's my transposition, if I wanna go ahead and transpose this keyboard a little bit. I can also set scale settings uh, for quick and easy playing of things like uh, majors, major pentatonics, and things like that. One thing that I really like is that all of the synths immediately have access to an arpeggiator. I really like using arpeggiation uh, for synth uh, bits in my songs. So to enable that, I just click on the arpeggiator button right here, and then I go ahead and just enable the arpeggiator. Then I can select the settings for the arpeggiator, note order and octave range and things like that. I can close that up by just clicking anywhere on the interface. And then if I play the keyboard, I'll hear the arpeggiator. So that's really cool. Uh, you know, again, immediately I can just start making music. Now I can make changes to these uh, settings for this synth if I want. And then if I found a sound that I like, uh, again, I can just start recording. So now I can, uh, I can uh, hit the rewind button to get myself back to the beginning of my arrangement. And I can hit record, get a count in, and just start recording a little synth bit here. And there we go, now I've recorded uh, my synth line immediately, and I can go back, and again, I can make edits to this by just going back into the arrange view. Now I can see that this is represented right here as a MIDI clip in my, set, in my uh, project, and I can play it back. Now again, there's a focus on really uh, making things move quickly here, so your notes will be quantized typically, um, and GarageBand is going to do its best guess to figure out how it is that you want to play things, so it will uh, quantize your notes so that they play and sound more normal and in time. Um, now I can make changes to the volume of these tracks um, by clicking on the mixer icon here in the top right hand corner. And then here I can change the volume of each of these tracks. So I can just select a track and then I can make changes so I can bring my drums up in the mix. My synth was a little too loud so I dropped its volume. So that's a bit more normalized and I can also make changes here to uh, quantization if I want. This will allow me to quantize the notes even further that are here on this uh, track that I'm working with. And I can also do transposition changes and I can add echo and reverb. So there's very quick access to some of the more basic things that you need on an average track right here. So this is just a really quick way of being able to get in and start making use of GarageBand. Uh, again, there's a lot of great options here guitar synths, uh, or rather should I say guitar sims, and uh, the ability to do sample recording and things like that. Uh, I am going to be talking about how to use a lot of those features, but this, as you can see, makes it really easy to just open up GarageBand and start making a song. Um, and so I'll be talking more in depth about this as we go along. If you guys have any questions about uh, making music on the iPad using GarageBand or any other apps, please feel free to get in touch with me, brian at obedia.com or on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash obedia tutor. Uh, this is going to become definitely a focus. Uh, we will still, of course, be focusing on music making in all of its forms, uh, but we feel that uh, this is a great service to offer to you guys. And so I hope that it, it helps you out. If you have any questions, get in touch with me. And until next time, happy music making to you. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.